Good morning. Uh, today we are getting prepared for the chapter four exam. As you can see, we have the chapter four exam study guide B. So if you have this handy, awesome, let's get started. Let's read the first set of directions. So determine if each table below represents a linear function. Linear, something that forms a line. A function is something that passes the vertical line test. So we have a linear function. If you believe it's a linear function, we're gonna say yes or no. If the table does represent a linear function, I also want you to create the uh, equation, the formula, okay? So let's look at the first one. So the first thing that we're gonna do is find the rate of change for our y value and our x value. So over here, I can see that this side is plus four all the way through, nice. On this side, I can see it's add three all the way through. Because we have a constant rate of change, that means the same number over and over and over again on this side. And we have a constant rate of change on this side, the same number over, over, and over again. We can say, yes, this is going to be a linear function because we have a constant rate of change for both our X value and our Y value. Now we're gonna create an equation. An equation of a line is right here in our directions. Y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b stands for slope, and the b is our y-intercept. So we need to locate two important ingredients from this information to create that beautiful line. So the first thing we're gonna do is find our slope. The slope is the change in y value over the change in x value. So the slope is the change or delta y all over delta x. It's the change in y value, which is the four on the top, all over the three. So the y value rate of change goes on the top the x goes on the bottom. That's our slope. So m equals 4 thirds. But I also need to find my y-intercept, that starting point when we're graphing. That's my b value. A y-intercept is any point that starts with zero. Ah, you probably are asking, why is that a y-intercept? Why, Mrs. Miller? Because when I graph that point, zero, one, it's right on the y-axis. If a point is on the y-axis, it makes it a y-intercept. So I know that my y-intercept is one. Perfect. Now I have the two basic ingredients for the equation. Let me write down the blank equation first to help me guide my brain. We're gonna drop in the four thirds here, and we're gonna drop in the one right here. So we have y equals four thirds don't forget the x. That's a pretty common mistake to forget the x plus one. Beautiful. That's your final answer. Now, I would suggest you pause the video here and try these three on your own to give it a try. So remember, the first thing we do is find our change on each side. If it's constant on both sides, we know it is, in fact, linear. And then that means you need to find the two ingredients, slope and y-intercept, that you're going to need to create the equation. And you're going to do that here. And here, this one's a little slightly spicy. This one's a little spicy. So this one, you're gonna to have to work a little bit harder to find your y-intercept. So if you wanna pause the video, go for it, and then come back. Awesome. Next, here we go. Two, 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 two. But it's not just any two, it's going down by two. So this side has a constant rate of change of minus two, negative two. This side has a constant rate of change of positive two. So yes. This is definitely a linear function. We have a constant rate of change for both our y and our x values. Cool. Now we need to locate two important ingredients, our slope and our y-intercept. Our slope is going to be the change of the y guy all over the change in the x. And our y-intercept is the one that starts with zero because if we graph that, it's gonna land right on the y-axis. Oh, there he is. He starts with zero. Zero, two, if you graphed it, would be right on that y-axis. So here we go, we're gonna write that down too. Now we have both ingredients that we need. Y equals 
negative two over two x plus two. Now that's a beautiful answer. However, we need to reduce our fractions. So two divided by two is a one. And this would be the answer that we would want to see. Yes, you would want to reduce your fractions. And two divided by two is one. Let's try the next one. One, 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 one. Uh, we have down two, down two, down two, down three. Nope. We don't have a constant rate of change on that side. So we're not sure what type of function it is. So we don't know what function to create. So we just know it's not a linear function. And last but not least, this is the one that's a little extra spicy. So let's check it out. We got one, 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 cool. We got three, 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 no problems there. We definitely have a linear function. We have a constant rate of change on both sides. Now, what's my equation? Y equals, our slope would be three on top of one, three over one, or just three. The one downstairs is up to you if you want to keep it. So we can say three X, uh-oh, holy smokes, do you see what we're missing? I don't see any point that is a y-intercept. And a y-intercept, again, is a point that starts with zero. I don't see that over here. Holy moly, where would it be? Well, if I expanded the pattern down this way, this would be six, and then that would be three more, that would be 22. It seems as though if I continue the pattern downwards, I'm not gonna find the zero. So maybe we need to go up on the pattern. So I need to know what number plus one would give me one? Ooh, there's my zero. I got it. And what number plus three would give me seven? What mysterious number, if I add three to it, is gonna give me seven? It's gonna give us four. And we have our beautiful equation now. So we now have the first problem done. Let's look at problem number two. So let's read the directions first. I think that's the key. Let's read our directions. It says, draw two linear functions and two non-linear functions in the spaces below. Clearly indicate which graphs are linear and which are non-linear. Okay, so let's talk about all these fancy words. So linear means that when you graph it, it makes a line. So linear means some kind of line. Nonlinear would be a shape that is not a line. Maybe a, a parabola. Maybe a piecewise function. Any shape, as long as it's just not a straight line. And a function means it must pass the vertical line test. The vertical line test, let's just take a moment to discuss that. A vertical line test is if I draw any shape and you put a vertical line next to it, it should only touch it one time. So I'm gonna grab a vertical line for us here. I'm gonna use this metallic, uh, this metal ruler. Let's see how many times I touch this shape. Once. 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 If every time you take this vertical line and you touch the shape with this vertical line and it only hits it once, that is a function. That means it is passing the vertical line test and that, my friends, is a function. Let's look at something that is not a function. It's not linear, that's for sure. It's a non-linear something, but let's see if it's a function. Wah, wah, wah. No, it's not a function. It fails the vertical line test. I'm hitting the shape one, two times. That's a no-go. Let's try another shape. How about this shape? Hmm, let's see if it's a function. It's definitely non-linear. It's not a line. Wah, wah, wah. It fails the vertical line test, so that's a no-go. How about a beautiful parabola? It passes. It touches just once, and that is definitely non-linear. So let's keep that one up there. It is non-linear, and that one is a function, 
because it passes the vertical line test. And it wants us to draw two nonlinear functions. Two, not lines, but they do pass the vertical line test. So let's try another shape. Here's a piecewise function that is definitely not linear. So we can say nonlinear, but let's make sure it's a function. One, one. Here's the weird one. It only hits once because that one's solid and that one's open. I like to think of the open one as kind of like a hula hoop. You just go right through it. So there is only one hit. So that is a function and it's also nonlinear. Now here we can write any line we want. Any line is a function except one. The only line that fails the vertical line test is this one. It is in fact a vertical line. So if I put that, oh, he would fail a ton of times. He touches multiple times. So you can draw any line that you want except a vertical line. So linear, linear, nonlinear, nonlinear, and all of them better pass the vertical line test. Let's try again. Yep, yep. One time hit, one time hit, yep. One time hit, one time hit, yep. Yep, 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 perfect. These are all functions. Two of them are linear because they form a line when graphed. Two of them are nonlinear because they don't form a line when graphed. Are we good? Have a great day. Come back for the next video and we'll start on section three. Bye.